The biggest thing that I love about studying in, in America is that it's nice to be able to, you know, sit with your advisor, figure out some issues you were having with your research and say, hey, be able to be comfortable enough to say, hey, I'm struggling with this. I need some help and some direction. Hello, everyone. So today uh, I'm with Amani, who is a PhD candidate in the Texas A&M University. Uh, I'm really happy uh, to interview her today because she's going to share all her experiences, how she came here, what is her experience, and everything you need to know about uh, to come here for agriculture and related fields. So let's introduce her. Hi, Amani, how are you doing? Hi, Shravya. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. So let's start off with this basic question. Can you tell us something about yourself? Like, where are you from in India? And how did you came here? My pleasure. Uh, so I am currently a PhD candidate at Texas A&M, uh, getting a degree in plant breeding. So I am originally from Hyderabad, India. I got my undergraduate degree in Bachelor's of Agricultural Science at the Acharya Indiranga Agricultural University at Rajendranagar. I also have a master's in plant breeding at Texas A&M, which I received in 2016. And uh, my expertise ranges from cotton breeding to sorghum breeding. I'm interested to become a plant breeder, which is a field of agricultural science. Uh, so can you tell us more about how did you came in? What was your journey from India to US? Uh, did you face any difficulties? Like how did you apply? Because you know, most of the students, they say it's really difficult to come here so what was your experience in that yes i'd be happy to share i came here in 2013 and i will try my best to consolidate uh, i guess eight years of experiences into the briefest answer i possibly can so in my undergrad i knew that i wanted to get a master's degree mostly because of some uh, some help from advisors who basically, you know, when they ask you your career path, what you want to do with your life, they kind of hint, okay, this, this is the type of education you're going to need. And I was told that a graduate degree is a minimum. And for me, I had a, a fortune because I wanted to study plant breeding and my father used to work in a seed company. Uh, so he knew a lot of plant breeders who had PhDs. And so he basically told me that if you ever want to do uh, what they're doing, you will need a graduate degree. I started writing for exams, the JRF exam, I was preparing for that. And I had a sister who lived in DC. And since she lived in the US, she really wanted me to study there. Basically, she wanted me to have the opportunity that she did not while she was studying. So because I had her help, she kind of helped me figure out, okay, I can apply to graduate school here. However, when it came to the process, it was kind of very difficult because everybody I knew actually came here either for like an engineering degree or for an MBA, which was a little different from um, applying to a, a degree in the agricultural sciences. When I applied for graduate school, I started off uh, as a self-funded student, which is something that I realized I ended up doing it to myself because I did not know this process of first applying to school, get somebody to support you. And after they support you, then you can make your decisions. That is the first step. But I applied to school before I even knew somebody wanted to support me or not. Okay, so after coming here, you got funded for your master's program? Actually, no. For <laughs> about for half of my program, I was unfunded. And then there was a TA position, which is a teaching assistantship that opened up within my department for which my professor recommended me. And I worked there for about a year and a half until I graduated. So for the second half of my program, I was partially funded. But for the first half, I was not. And that this is not something I would recommend to anybody. So when you get an assistantship like that, is it going to give you a hundred percent tuition fee waiver or how does that work? So each assistantship is different. I think there are three types of assistantships, a teaching assistantship, a research assistantship, and then there's like a non-teaching assistantship, which is not a research assistantship. I, I remember I had a teaching assistantship that only paid my tuition. And then I had assistantships which paid both my tuition and my fees. And sometimes mm -hmm. they don't cover insurance or something like that. So it will all depend on the offer that you receive. You should look for assistantships that cover both tuition, fees, and your insurance. As you said, you have started your journey here in the US from 2013. Like how your journey is being through? How was your research experience? Any cultural shocks that you faced here? Could you share with us? So when I tell you cultural shock, I have a very awesome story for 
remember this. Uh, I remember going to my very first class in molecular genetics. It was like a gallery type classroom, you know, where dais is like on the floor and the, the chairs are placed such that it goes up. Yeah. And I remember my first class, my first day in my first class, it was like a 9-10 class and I was in the classroom by 9 a.m. And I was sitting and waiting for the professor to come. It's like 9.08, you know, a guy walks in and he's like standing on the stage. And this classroom, I think, will house about 50 students. And there's like six students because, you know, grad level classes, that's how that's how it is, especially yeah. for, I mean, I don't think if and people in engineering ever experience the joy yeah. of being in a class that's only five or six people. <laughs> Uh, but but that happens in agriculture and like specialty courses like that. It was like completely empty. And this guy walks up all the way up there and he starts talking saying, hey guys, I'm your professor. And I'm like, what? Because <laughs> guess what? This guy was wearing, this is Texas in the middle of August, which is one of the hottest months. And he's like wearing cargo shorts and like a t-shirt. And I had never seen someone who had a PhD dressed like that. And <laughs> that blew my mind. So that was the biggest culture shock for me. And this, that that same day, I had a student uh, sitting in like the very first two rows uh, eating while the professor was teaching with his feet propped up in the chair next to him. And I thought that was very disrespectful. But the professor couldn't care less because that guy while eating, he was paying attention. And that's all that that matters. The biggest thing that I love about studying in, in America is there is obviously a hierarchy, but there is it's so relaxed that it's nice to be able to, you know, sit with your advisor, figure out some issues you were having with your research and say, hey, be able to be comfortable enough to say, hey, I'm struggling with this. I need some help and some direction so you are you had like a very good research experience here well my research experience was really good like in terms of I learned a lot out of it I learned like different things that I really wanted to learn I learned things that I I want to wanted to learn for jobs I want to hold so I learned those things so yes one more interesting question I would like to ask you here is what are the suggestions you would give to the students uh, who wanted to come to the U.S. for agriculture oh there's a lot of suggestions but I'll try to keep it brief so the first thing I would tell is to pick a research topic that you're actually passionate about it can change after you come here it's likely because after a couple of years you might realize your strengths lie somewhere else but before you come here pick a research topic that you like the second thing is to pick a purpose know your why why do you want to do a degree here why is it so important to you uh, one important thing I would like to ask you is how about the career opportunities for agriculture students in USA? I know it's a bit hard, but how do you think which courses will be better? Many of the people ask which course I need to choose for getting a jo good job in the US. Can you share as any experiences that you have? So agriculture is a really, really broad field. So I don't know when you say agriculture, like I know you're, you're coming from the background of India where, you know, there's agriculture, you get a bachelor's in agriculture. But right here, there are, I think, 16 departments. And in that 16 departments, some departments offer just one type of graduate degree. I know my own department offers five different graduate degrees. There's plant breeding, there's agronomy, soil science, turf science, and there's interdisciplinary MAPS, which is molecular and environmental plant science. What I'm trying to say is there are a lot of degrees that are ag majors. So depending on your specialization, the job market is very broad. Some of it will play into some of your research and some of it will play into what you want to do after you graduate, there are a lot of options that you could be doing. And I can't tell you for every degree of what they can do. There are opportunities in a wide range of companies. And also the type of study you do is, I think when you look at agriculture, the major areas that you can work is either in the public sector, which is working for universities or working for USDA or working for other research institutes that are publicly owned. And then there's the private industry where you work for companies. So I myself would probably be working for a seed company where I'm doing breeding. And then the third is the NGO world where you either work for the CGIAR centers or some NGOs across the world. So these are the three main directions your career can go. 